Hey everybody, welcome to my yard. I want to show you what I have growing here. We're here in Southern California, zone 10B. We're in the month of May. Spring's about to end, summer's about to start. It's a nice time. A lot of plants are active growth. Things are looking good. So let's get started. Here's the first thing. This is the Wurtz Avocado. Believe it or not, it's seven years old. I planted the seed in 2013. And then I grafted the tree a year later. And it's a Wurtz Avocado seed. Uh, Wurtz, aka W-U-R-T-Z, also known as Little Cotto. And then I grafted a Little Cotto scion onto the Little Cotto seedling to create an ultra dwarf tree. So seven years old, four years in the ground, and it stands at four feet tall. Pretty cool. And it has fruit on it too. Let's see. There's some fruit right there. See? Here's some more fruit. Interesting. I'm doing more tests. I'm grafting more of this onto different seedlings to see if it maintains this really small size. And a lot of people are asking about it. They want a, a tree for, a, for their pot to grow in a pot. So testing continues. I'll keep you updated. Over here, this is the Misi Luki banana. Got it from my friend Denise. Denise, shout out to Denise, thank you for the tree. I planted it in the ground two months ago and it has some new leaves. I don't know too much about it. It's supposed to be a rare variety and it's supposed to get really, really tall. That's about all I know about that variety. Over here is the Pinkerton avocado. I planted this about four years ago and it's grown wider than it grow, has grown tall. Let me step back so you guys can see. Four years in the ground, stands about four feet tall as well. And it has some fruit on it. Here's some fruit. This fruit, oh, here's more. I'll let it hold avocados this year. Last year it fruited as well, but I didn't let it hold because it's still too young. And yeah, oh, here's a Ataufo mango. You know those yellow kidney shaped mangoes you buy at the supermarket? I planted a seed and this one came out. This was uh, about four years ago as well. Four year old tree. Also about three and a half, four feet tall. And it started flower from seed. Look at that. Only four years old and it's starting to flower. But I'll, cut, I'll take all the flowers off because it's still too young. And look what I've done to the ground. Look at all that leaf layer I added. I basically go to my neighbors and also when, I'm, when I mow my own lawn. By the way, I need to mow my lawn, look at that. So I go to my neighbors, I get their, all their leaf clippings. I just throw it under my trees. And then also when I eat garlic or onions or potato peels or orange peels, I throw them under here as well. And that creates a nice forest-like situation that the trees love. A nice mulch layer. <clears throat> Over here, jackfruit from store-bought seeds. So I buy jackfruit from the supermarket and then I uh, just plant the seeds. This one right here, I planted it two months ago, but I had it in a pot for like three years. This is, uh, no, not three years, two years. This variety tastes like bubblegum, so I called it bubblegum. And then this one, these two, or three, these tasted like uh, mango, so I call it mango jackfruit. Jackfruit is really versatile. It has a lot of diversity in taste. And it's struggling here, but uh, it's growing. I put a white paint on it to stop the sunburn. And we'll see how it does. I'm really excited. This new leaf right here, it's nice and fat. And it shows me that the tree's roots are getting established. And it's tough for these trees because they have con competition with this giant tree right here, you see. I don't know what kind of tree it is, but whatever it is, its roots suck out a lot of water and nutrients from the yard. In fact, there's like dead spots of the yard where the, all, a lot of the tree's roots are, and they just suck out nutrients. And so plants, you gotta be a tough plant in this area to survive. But so far, with this mulch layer, trees look like they're doing well. This is the Acerola Barbados cherry. It's been in the ground for a year. And look, there's some flowers on it. There, nice flowers. We're gonna have some berries coming up. Really high vitamin C content for the Barbados cherry. 
It's about like five, six feet tall. Pretty exciting. Here's my little compost bin project. I throw a bunch of seeds here. Every fruit I eat, I'll throw, I'll toss the seeds and whatever grows will grow. These, that's a reed avocado seedling that I really love. I'm not gonna graft it. I just love the leaves, the shape of the leaves. And I'm gonna let it grow from a seed. And if it makes good fruit, I'll name it, I'll name the variety after my nephew. It's pretty nice. Over here, there's a bunch of different avocado seeds. And I did a graft right here. See that? I think this is the Nabal avocado graft on top of a random seedling that I tossed over here. Over here is a rose bush. It's been here since I got this house and it hasn't changed. I have given it no care, but it grows well. It gets water from when I water these avocados, but uh, I don't know what variety bush it is. Rose bush it is. Over here is passion fruit. I let it grow over the top of the roof. Two varieties, one passion fruit there, another one there. there both of them are the Frederick's passion fruit and I'm gonna zoom out zoom out so you guys can see how it's grown I've always wanted a house that has a vine or a moss or something growing on it I've always been attracted to those kind of houses so I let the passion fruit go over the roof I wanted to take over the house but I talked to a roofer he said don't do this because it's bad it'll It'll cause water retention problems and it'll cause leaks in your roof. So we'll see. We'll see if I want to take it out or not. Over here, I planted more jackfruit, more seedlings, different varieties. They're struggling again with this tree's roots, powerful roots, suck out a lot of water from the ground. So I have to water these jackfruits a little bit extra. But again, nice big fat new leaves. It's a good sign. Oh, here's another jackfruit and I did in arch grafting to strengthen this this one so I took this weaker one combined the two here taped them together made a cut put them together and so now they're gonna grow together eventually I'll cut off the weak one and basically I'm getting two root systems supporting one tree so the tree can go grow better that's an idea I got from uh, from watching YouTube. Let's see, over here is another Ataufo mango seedling that I just tossed on the ground. I've never watered this. Actually, no, I watered it in the first six months of its life. And then after that, I let it go. It's been here now for two years with no care. It only gets rainwater. And this just illustrates the toughness of mangoes because a lot of fruit trees with this kind of maltreatment, look, it's in the, it's in the easement, the public sidewalk. People throw trash on it, you know, like dogs come and pee on it and stuff. But it's surviving, and this illustrates how tough mangoes are. Uh, a lot of trees would have perished, like an avocado, for example. It would be, it would be gone. So this shows how tough mango seedlings, especially, are. So I'm gonna start planting more mango seedlings and I'm gonna see how they perform. Let's go, let's go into the backyard now. Okay, now we go to the backyard. Okay, this was a ficus fiddle leaf fig. I found it in a dumpster. Uh, near my work, I dug it out and it, had, it was tall. It used to be double the height. I cut it back because it was growing strangely. And ever since I cut it back, there's some we get some nice growth here. That really works with plants. I call it it's called it the phoenix, phoenix kind of pruning. You cut it way back and then it'll start to sprout out again. It's a good move for struggling plants. Water catchment jugs, 55 gallons each. Every time it rains, you catch a lot of water. You get free water. Water the plants. Plants love rainwater. All right, let's see. Oh, I have a bunch of plants in pots. A lot of different fruit trees. I have grafted avocados, reed avocados. I have pomegranate seedlings, thyme, bananas. Oh, shout out to Francis. Thank you for the bananas. 
Miracle Fruit, Miracle Berry, Coffee Tree. Got it from Exotica Nursery. Shout out Exotica Nursery down in Vista, Vista, California. Amazing nursery. You guys can check it out. It's, they have the, some of the greatest selection I've ever seen. Here's some more jackfruits. I did more in arch grafting down there. Double grafted avocado. Double grafted avocado, Jan Boyce and Nabal. Jan Boyce Nabal. Grafted onto a Fuerte rootstock that shot out two sprouts. So I took advantage of that. Here's a jackfruit, did a video on it, planted it in shade. It's still alive, lost a lot of leaves, but still doing its thing. Rat traps, not, not, necessarily, for, not necessarily for rats, but more for a raccoon or a possum that comes over here and eats all the worms every time I throw compost over here. Avocado seedling sprouted. I tossed the seed, came out. I'm gonna graft onto it. it has nice, two nice side branching shoots. Right behind it is the ice cream banana, blue java. I planted this a year ago. And a shout out to Dan, thanks for the, for, thanks for the tree. There's the mother plant, and here's the pup. The pup uh, is about, this pup's getting huge. There's another variety right behind it. I don't know the name. Uh, I got it from Home Depot, actually. Unnamed banana. Is the, there's the mother, and then here's the pup right in front of it. And this is exciting. This is the dwarf Orinoco. Mother, pup, and look, finally. Look at that. Can you see? Oh, so tough to see. There it is, the uh, flower. We're about to get bananas. So these were all planted. The ice cream was planted a year ago. These two were planted two years ago, 2018. And finally, we're getting some. We're gonna get some fruit. The dwarf Orinoco. I don't know why they call it dwarf because it's the tallest one here. Uh, over here is the multi-grafted citrus. Kind of tough to see there it is multigrass citrus five varieties of citrus on one tree and it's thriving no flowers strangely it hasn't flowered i'm gonna give it another year and then if it doesn't flower again i'll cut it back and graft other varieties that do flower uh, last year one of the grafts flowered heavily it's the ortonique tangor still one left but the rest strangely have not flowered so i've started to graft other varieties like the Satsuma Mandarin. This is Satsuma Mandarin grafted onto the multi grafted citrus tree. Over there is a gold nugget mango. All it does is fruit, it doesn't grow. This is the best growth flesh it's got since I planted it in 2017. But it does make a lot of fruit. And the squirrels love it. Last year it had three fruit that reached maturity, but the squirrels got it before I did. So this year I have some rat traps set up. I squirrel defense. Over there, another mango. I'm obsessed with mangoes, my favorite fruit. I love them. So I've planted many. Edward mango and Glen mango grafted onto the same tree. This is a Manila mango rootstock. And then over there is a Keat mango graft. And then on top of the Keat graft, I put Edward over here and then Glen right there. And look at the Glen. Glen has a little fruit, pretty nice. Over here is a bunch of mango seedlings that I got from Florida, all different varieties. And I let the seeds grow out of some of my favorite mangoes that I got from Truly Tropical Farms. Shout out Truly Tropical Farms. Shout out to Chris and Har. Thank you for the mangoes that I got them got from them in 2018. And the reason why I planted those seeds is because there's a lot of variety at their farm. So there's a lot of chance for cross pollination. And that means that you can create new varieties of uh, different crosses of mangoes, so that's exciting. Got a ghost pepper right here, one of the hottest peppers in the world. Shout out to Toro Nursery for that. Down in Torrance, this is a paw paw tree. The paw paw, the only native Anona to North America. Pretty interesting. I think it doesn't fruit here because we don't get enough chill hours, but it's one of uh, North America's native fruit trees. Shout out to Margaret, thank you for that. I got a giant bamboo, dendrocalamus asper. And I thought it was dead, but look, 
it's starting to show some new growth. Giant bamboo. This can reach 80 feet. I've seen some pretty tall like that. Behind it is the Muscat of Alexandra grape. I did a video on my channel of me planting this grape and now look at it. It's, it's a beast. It's a monster. I planted this in 2018. The grapes, the bananas were planted within a month of each other and this has gone out of control. It's taking over the carport and I put chicken wire up there to support it and it's growing amazingly and the fruit is really good. It has a nice musky kind of it has a unique flavor that i think some people really like and other people will not like at all but i, I really like it and let me show you let me show you more see it's grown all the way to the side of this carport pretty cool now like i said earlier i love mango let me show you how much i love mango I'm on the other side of the fence. So I took a bunch of mango seedlings again that I got from Florida. Some of my favorites that I got from Tr Truly Tropical and I got some from the Fruit and Spice Park too down in Redlands. Shout out to Fruit and Spice Park. So right here, this is the Sweet Tart seedling. This is Jahangir seedling. That right there is a Fairchild seedling. And then this is a seedling of the Kerry mango. It was the first mango I ate when I got to Florida and it was still one of the top five mangoes I've ever had in my life. That's that. And then back there, that's the Manila mango. No, Ataufo mango. Another store-bought Mexican mango. Those little yellow kinds, those are mixed root. Those I've noticed are really tough and they make a great rootstock uh, here in Southern California. If you guys don't want to buy a mango tree from a nursery just go buy a mango from from any grocery store one of those yellow ones and plant the seed more fruit trees over there I got jackfruits in containers and a bunch of other stuff in containers oh I forgot to mention there avocado it was here when I got the house I cut the tree in half it used to be like 12 feet tall I cut it back in half and I grafted different varieties onto it. Here's a reed avocado graft. I got a Charwell graft back there. And then uh, speaking of throwing seeds on the ground, I threw a seed here. This is the Inga edulis ice cream bean tree. It's a nitrogen fixer and it just sprouted on its own. And then back there also is a cherimoya, another seed that I threw. A seed that I got from Margaret. Thanks, Margaret. This is the ring cone cherimoya seed seedling and yeah guys that's about it thank you for joining me on the tour i hope you enjoyed leave a comment let me know what you think if you guys are interested in any of these plants all you got to do is be a subscriber it's up for grabs just let me know and as always thank you for watching bye